Hello everyone, welcome back in today's tutorial on Informatica MDM SIP Development Eclipse Setup. So in today's session we will see how to set up Eclipse for Informatica MDM SIP Development. The steps we need to follow are the first step is nothing but download the Eclipse Enterprise Edition. We prefer Eclipse 3.7 and onwards version of the Eclipse. You can go to the https eclipse.org and download the Eclipse Enterprise Edition. It is a zip file. So in order to install the Eclipse, you have to just unzip the folder. Once you unzip the folder, the next step is nothing but gathering the all SIF related jar files. In order to gather the SIF jar files, you have to go to the resource kit installation directory. From there, you can gather the all the install all the respected or uh, respective SIF jar files. Then we we are going to create a sample Java project, and we will use those jar files. So in our so once you uh, once you download the Eclipse and install, an icon will be created on the desk like this. And using that icon, you can open the Eclipse. So let me show you how to open. Just double click that Eclipse icon and it will ask you for the workspace. Workspace nothing but a place where your work will be stored. Like the what are the jar files you do, what are the class files you do create. That location will be asked. So you have to provide the uh, look uh, you have to provide the that location so find mine case what the location i have provided for example let me show you the location the location for mine case is e directory tech folder then the mdm and the workspace is sif workspace so we can give any name to this folder the next thing is once you open that eclipse this uh eclipse will look like this it has the project explorer view then the file opener file open view here the all the class files will be visible then we have the below the plugin view where we can configure server plugin or server view or the properties or error console etc at the right side we can see the outline view it will show you the what is the outline what is the location where you are working on then the next thing we are going to do is gathering the all jar files for the sip related for gather the all jar file you have to go to the installation directory that is in pymdm go to the resource kit installation go to the sdk sif sdk go to the lib and you have to select all the jar files from this location these are the required jar files so what i'll do i will copy these jar files at particular location for example, I will go to the E directory, take, I, I created the lib directory here, but similarly I will create one more directory called as siflib. And you can paste all those jar files here. Similarly, I will go and copy the other respective jar files. The first is we need, if you are going to develop a web service, then the access jars will be required. So we will take the access jar from the this folder, copy this and put here. Then the next thing is required if what uh, is nothing but a J2 jar file, if you are developing any J2 application. Then the next thing is the server dependent jar. If you're using weblogic, then they use the weblogic file jar file that is a within um, weblogic client. If you're using WebSphere server, then use these jar files. Jersis is required if you're using any Jersis specific APIs. So I will copy this for our reference. So we created, we gather all the jar files which are required for the our SIF application development. The next thing is we have to configure the JDK. In order to configure the JDK, you have to go to the Windows Preferences. And here you can see the Java build path. 
you can see the build file you can configure the build part according to your project then we have install jre so you have to go to the install jre and click what are the default selected click on the add select standard vm next and here take out the jre home so where your jdk is installed normally it is installed in the program files so check whether you have installed inside the program file or outside the program files in my case it is installed inside the program file so go to that and select the appropriate jdk so if you are using um see for the higher version like mdm 9.7 on the 10 select the one jdk 1.7 and you will see all these are files available inside the jdk just click finish once you click finish you have to select the one uh, the jdk one which you install and this jdk now associated with your eclipse so that can be used for your project once you set that the next thing is say, uh, setting is nothing but the server so in my project i am going to use the jbus server so in order to configure the jbus server if you're not able to see any of this plugin for example i close the server now i want to get the server again so that i can configure the server or if you want any other plugin or any other view in order to get that go to the windows and here show view so you can see the console we can see if your server is running the console log will be mentioned on the console if you want to see um the server you have to just click server and if you want some more plugins which is not you can't see here so you have, you can go to the other and just search here like property i can see that property views also like that so i will go to the server and i configure the my jboss server here in order to configure the jboss just click new server wizard select appropriate uh, jboss plugin so i have jboss community jboss and jboss enterprise middleware as my version is 6.1 or 6.2 i will use this 6.1 version click next and here it will ask the directory where it is installed so we are going to browse the installation directory for the jboss make sure you are already installed jboss for your application then select appropriate jboss directory you will get warning for this 6.2 but it's fine and just click finish so currently jboss is configured in my in my eclipse if you want to configure any other server you have to again just click on the uh, here in this right click new server so you can suppose i want to also use the web logic server then i am i will go to the oracle i am i already installed the web logic 10.3.6 so i will select that plugin you have to provide the jboss home uh, sorry web logic home in this case i have web logic 3 10.3.6 inside that you have to select the where the what is the home directory this is the home directory and it is validating the runtime if you want to choose any other jdk you can choose from here also the one which is already installed or if you don't want to change just let it be but the we are you going to develop the mdm uh, we are going to use mdm 10.0 so you have to choose the jdk 1.7 onwards and it is currently pointed to 1.6 so what i'll do i will go and use jdk form my the program files here and click ok next and domain this is uh, if you're if you're aware about the web logic we need to create the domains here so we'll by default domain is created when you install the web logic or you can create your custom domain also just we select this and finish so now the both the server got configured similarly you can add the web space server also okay let's go and create one sample java project 
In order to create a sample Java project, go to the files in the Eclipse section, go to the new, and here you can see many of the projects available. If you are not able to find the Java project, go to the others and type here Java project. So you can see the Java project available. So you can select this one, this both are same. Next, give the project name Sif API project. Then you have to select the JRE. So if you remember, we have Configure the current JDK as 1.7.07 using the uh, JR installation. You can use the appropriate JDK also, whatever the version you want for your project. So use a project specific JR. This is the current one. Then, uh, if you want to add this project in other working set, you have to you have to create that working set and you can use that. But normally we don't. Then click on the next. So it will try to prepare for the creation of the CPPA project. If you want to add some dependencies, for example, if there are some already some projects are available, you can add that dependency here by clicking add button. If you want to use any external jars, you can add here. Like if you remember, in order to add external jar, like what are the jar folder we have created inside the safe, you can close that and you can add here. But I will show you some other way also. Just click for now at this finish and the final project is created. So this is one pop up is uh, will come and it will say current perspective means what is the look and feel of this Eclipse is for the Java Enterprise Edition application. Do you want to change for the normal Java application? If you say yes, then the work workspace look and feel will change. Now from now it's from Java EE to simple Java project view. So the look and feel of the Eclipse will be changed if you change the view. So you can click here if you want, if you don't like that view and you can work on this view. But I would recommend choose appropriate view because it will help to uh, navigate appropriately. If you want to change this perspective, you can go and open appropriate perspective using the Windows tab also. Okay, the next thing is expand the project one which you created. Right click on the project and add one folder. So we'll add one folder called as a lib. That is added. Now we will go to the lib folder one which you added all the jar files. Copy all those jar files and put inside this. So now we can see all the jar files inside this lib. Right click on the project, go to the properties and go to the Java build path and here we can see the both the thing which we saw during the project creation. Now instead of using the add external jar, external jar will point out to the uh, the location inside the uh, ins directory which are hiring on the system. Add jar will point to the within the project. So we created the lib folder here. So that's why we are able to see that all the jars. Select the all the jars. Just click one and shift button. And I can see all the jars are associated at the runtime for my project. So these are the basic things required to create a simple Java project in your Eclipse for the Cif API. So I hope this session will help you to start development of this safe API using Eclipse. If you have any questions about the safe API, how to set up Eclipse, or if you have any questions, which version is you are going to prefer, or what are the things are other things are required to set up Eclipse for the safe API development, you can mention in the video below. You can my subscribe channel also for more update about the informatic MDM. C services integration framework that is SIP, IDD and other informatica related topics. Thank you for watching the video and have a nice time.